Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm having a look at GPT for All and the very latest models they've got here. GPT for All J and also GPT for All 13B Snoozy. As you can see here on this list of manual downloads, you've got the groovy bin at the top there. I'm actually going to be downloading them from Hugging Face, so not these particular links, but they do tell you a little bit about those models. So the first one there, groovy, current best commercially licensable model based on GPTJ and trained by Nomic AI on the latest curated GPT for all data set. And then much the same with Snoozy. Apart from that is the non-commercially licensable model, and that is based on Llama 13B. We have a quick look at the paper for GPT for all J. We can see here, this is an Apache 2 licensed chatbot trained over a massive curated corpus of assistant instructions, including word problems, multi-turn dialogue, code, poems, songs, and stories. There's also an interesting bit here. In earlier versions of GPT for All, we found that rather than writing actual creative content, the model would discuss how it would go about writing the content. Training on their new dataset apparently increased the competence with this. These are the models I've downloaded. We've got the GPT for All J as the model card for that one and also GPT for All 13B Snoozy. If we have a quick look at GPT for All J and scroll down, as you can see, there are various different versions. You've got Breezy, Jazzy, and Groovy. I'm going to be using the Ubabuga text generation web user interface, and because Groovy is a branch, I'm just going to use the Python download model.py as if you try to do this inside the web interface, you'll find there's actually no way to select the particular revision I want, which is Groovy. I'm running both of the models at the same time here, and I've just modified the characters so it's easy to tell which is which. There is 7B Groovy, and I've called that character 7B Groovy, and there is 13B Snoozy. I'm also going to be comparing output with the famous chat GPT and also Bard as well. The table from the model card gives us some rather interesting results. As you can see there, GPT for all 13B Snoozy actually scores the highest in a number of columns. Groovy doesn't do quite as well, but then of course it is a lot smaller, and it's certainly comparable to things like Llama 7B. Alrighty then, let's dive into doing some tests. I think I'll test on some facts first and see which can give me the best answer. So here we are, I'm looking for which freezes faster, hot water or cold water. 7B Groovy has given me an answer that hot water will freeze faster than cold water because it has more heat energy per unit volume. Okay, that seems fairly reasonable. Let's try exactly the same thing with 13B Snoozy and see what sort of answer we get out of this one. 13B Snoozy says that depends on the temperature difference between them at any given time. If there isn't much of a temperature difference either way, then they will both freeze at about the same rate. However, if one is significantly colder than the other, it will freeze more quickly. Okay, that's certainly an interesting answer. Let's see what chat GPT has to say about this. Here it says, contrary to what most people may believe, hot water actually freezes faster than cold water in certain circumstances. This phenomenon has a particular name, and it's named after a Tanzanian student. And it being ChatGPT, it is, of course, still generating. Let's have a look at Bard. Hot water can freeze faster than cold water under certain conditions. Again, it gives us the name, and it also provides some explanation there. I think Bard did the best there, mostly because it's quite fast. Our old friend ChatGPT is actually still going there. So I guess overall 7B Groovy did reasonably well, even though it was a very, very short answer. Oh, and just to say for the parameters on these, not using anything special at all. These are all just the defaults and it's the standard chat mode as well. All right, let's try another one here. It's a very difficult question. What is the full real name of Stevie Wonder? And apparently 7B Groovy thinks the full real name of Stevie Wonder is Steveland J Wonder. I'll let you figure out if that is the right answer or not. 13B has just given us a very simple answer. The full name of Stevie Wonder is Steveland Hardaway Morris. 
that's quite good. Okay, Chat GPT has given us a lot more information there. We've got Steveland Hardaway Morris, but also that he was born Stephen Hardaway Judkins and lots of other information. Bard, what has Bard got? Bard has got much the same information. Bard has done quite well. Chat GPT has done quite well. 13B has also done very well. 7B, yeah, sorry, sorry, no. All right, let's try again with another really difficult one here. On which platform was the game Tunnels of Doom released? And here, 7B Groovy says it was released on the Atari 2600 console in 1983. Okay, I'll leave it up to you to figure out if that is the right answer. It's not. Tunnels of Doom was originally released for the Atari 2600 in 1982, says 13B Snoozy. Okay, so much the same answer. Chat GPT correctly identifies that the classic video game was released for the Texas Instruments TI-99-4A in 1982, and also provides a lot of additional information. And Bard also gets it correct. Tunnels of Doom released on the TI-99-4A in 1982, and a little bit more information there. So Bard and GPT got it right, and I'm afraid both of these two were incorrect. Looking for even more essential information from the world, this time I'm trying to figure out what is the name for the blob of toothpaste that sits on your toothbrush. Groovy comes back with some incredible pearls of wisdom. The name for the blob of toothpaste that sits on your toothbrush is toothpaste. Okay, fair enough. And uh, <laughs> 13P Snoozy says the blob of toothpaste is called paste residue. All right, we've got two different answers there. Chat GPT still going. It's attempting to answer this. And uh, the blob of toothpaste is referred to as a pea-sized amount of toothpaste. All right, and Bard, oh Bard, okay, well done Bard, Bard, the blob of, blob of toothpaste that sits on your toothbrush is called a nurdle, correct, that is the correct name, so everyone got it wrong there, apart from Bard. Okay, so with regards to factual information, I don't think either of them did quite well, but then it did say it was trained more on stories and stuff. All right, let's try some reasoning tests now instead. Here, if Mary has three apples and John has five, how many apples are there in total? Let's see if 7B Groovy can figure this out. There are a total of 10 apples in this scenario, that's correct. 3 plus 5 is most certainly equal to 10. All right, let's try with 13B Snoozy. There would be a total of 8 apples in this scenario because Mary has 3 and John has 5, so together they have 6 apples. Okay, also interesting. So it got it right the first time, but then just sort of carried on waffling and pretended there were 6 apples. Mm -mm. All right, ChatGPT said, something went wrong. Please try this again. I'm sure it probably would have got the right answer had it been working. Bard, okay, there are eight apples in total. Three plus five equals eight. Well done, Bard. Okay, let's try some more basic reasoning here. So we've got three statements here. Statement one, Nerdy pointed at Jane. Statement two, Jane pointed at a tree. And statement three, Nerdy did not point at a tree. Assuming the first two statements are correct, is the third statement true or false? false and 7b groovy says the third statement is false again i'll leave it up to you to figure out if 7b got that correct while we move on to 13b see what that says okay so 13b says it is true that nerdy did not point at a tree based on the information provided by the second sentence all right that's pretty good and over to chat gpt this one says if the first two statements s1 and s2 are both true it is not possible for the third statement S3 to be true. And what does Bard say? Bard says the third statement is true. Gives me S1 and S2 again. So if Nerdy pointed at Jane and Jane pointed at a tree, then Nerdy must have pointed at something that was not a tree. That, that's correct, Jane is not a tree. Therefore, the third statement, Nerdy did not point at a tree, is true. Well done, Bard. Okay, so that's some fairly basic reasoning. 7B didn't do too well on that last round. 13B and Bard did very well. Chat GPT got a little bit confused. So let's try something even more complicated, shall we? Okay, so this time I'm saying that it has to make inference from the facts that I'm giving it. So they have to assume this is true. I've got premise one, you are nervous if you are outside. Premise two, everyone outside is anxious. And the conclusion, is if you are outside, you are both 
anxious and nervous. So which is the correct answer? Does that conclusion follow or does that conclusion not follow? Let's see what 7B Groovy has to say about that. Answer A is correct. The conclusion follows. All right, I'll let you figure out if that is the right answer or not while I go and have a look at 13B. 13B, okay, that's interesting. 13B has given us an answer that does not exist. Answer C, uh, which is it actually answer B, the conclusion does not follow. Chat GPT, as is its way, is still going. The conclusion does not necessarily follow from the given premises. So Chat GPT says the correct answer is B. And Bard also says the correct answer is B. The conclusion does not follow. Okay, so Bard got it wrong, Chat GPT got it wrong, 13B got it wrong, but this time 7B actually got it correct. Here I've just pasted rather a long bit of text from the book called The Time Machine. If I click generate, I'm asking it here to summarize that large body of text. And here 7B Groovy says, the conclusion is based on the assumption that the speaker is discussing the concept of reality and its limitations. It suggests that the speaker believes that certain ideas about reality, such as the ideas that lines and planes have no real existence, are misconceptions. All right, that's, that's not a bad summary. Right, let's have a look at 13B Snoozy. Let's see what that says. In this passage, the speaker argues against the ideas that certain concepts, such as lines, planes, cubes, etc., are abstract ideas with no physical reality. Instead, he suggests that these objects actually exist in some form, even though we cannot see them directly. And ChatGPT says, the speaker challenges the commonly accepted notions of geometry taught in school. And they argue that mathematical lines, planes, and cubes are mere abstractions and do not have a real existence. They propose that a solid body may not exist and question whether an instantaneous cube can have real existence. Bard really gets into it. Look at that. That's a massive result. Uh, this text is a conversation between a man and two other people. OK, fair enough. Um, the man is arguing that geometry that is taught in schools is founded on a misconception. And they go on about much the same thing. I think they did. I think they all did quite well. Bard is obviously the longest one there. ChatGPT, it, it's OK. It's interesting. And both of those, I think they did all right, all of them on summaries. All right, apparently there was a bit of coding in that training data, so let's see if it can code. Here, write a complete Python 3 script that outputs the first seven numbers in the Fibonacci sequence in reverse order. Okay, 7B Groovy has given us a script there. Okay, let's, let's copy and paste that into a Python file. There we go. Pop that in there, paste, give it a quick run, see if it actually works. Is this going to give us the result we want? No, it, it's not even executable code. Sorry. If I do the same for the 13B code, there that is. All right, let's paste that in. Give it a quick run. Fib.py. No, sorry, that doesn't run either. How does chat GPT do? Let's have a look at that one. This time when we run Fib, it's going to give us 8532110, the correct answer. Google Bard, let's see what that one does. Paste that in, give that a quick run. And that says, oh, 8532110 as well. Also the correct answer. Perhaps Groovy and Snoozy are not the best at coding, so let's get a little bit creative instead. As he said, it had been trained on lots of creative writing, poems and stories and songs and things. Let's get it to do exactly that. Write a six-line poem about a nerdy rodent. Here is what 7B Groovy came up with. OK, that's not six lines, but uh, in a corner nestled deep lived a creature small and neat with fur so soft and eyes so bright, it caught my eye one starry night. Its name was Nerdy, oh so rare, and though it seemed quite unaware, it had a purpose, clear and true, to nibble on my snacks anew. But then one day it slipped away, leaving me alone to say goodbye to my beloved snack as it disappeared into the dark. <clears throat> oh, nerdy, dear nerdy, gone astray, your absence leaves me feeling grey, for now I am left with naught but thought about memories we shared.
I'm spoilt and wrought. Okay, that's interesting. It's, it's not six lines, but it does read very well. 13b also cannot count to six, but let's see what that says. Here's a little ditty about a nerdy rodent who loved to read books and play with his computer. Okay, that doesn't rhyme. Uh, he had big glasses and a bushy tail, and he always wore a smile without fail. One day while browsing online, he stumbled upon some code divine. With excitement in his heart, he began coding right, coding right away. Never, no, that, I, I don't like reading that. It hasn't quite got the same flow to it. All right, let's have a look at chat GPT. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chat GPT can count. In a cozy lab hidden from sight, there lived a nerdy rodent, tiny and bright, with beady eyes and a curious mind. It tinkered with gadgets of every kind. Though small in size, it dreamt big dreams. This nerdy rodent, a genius, it seems. All right, that's not too bad. That's perfectly readable. And how does Bard do? There once was a young rodent named Nerd. Okay, it's gone with a limerick style instead, whose knowledge of science was absurd. He knew all the facts about all the acts of all the creatures that never occurred. All right, that's quite absurd. I didn't ask for a limerick, so uh, all right. I mean, I quite like this. I mean, 7B did really well, even though it wasn't six lines. I, I quite like it. All right, let's do some more creative stuff here. So using the style of Shakespeare, give me a two verse song about a rodent and include a funny chorus. There is Groovy's 7B's masterpiece. I'll let you read that for yourself and figure out if that is a good song or not, but it looks okay. Obviously we've got a lot of rhyming going on there. C and the, night and bright, all sorts of things like that, but not necessarily so much lower down, which is fine because it's a song. They don't have to rhyme. Is it particularly in the style of Shakespeare? Mm, perhaps not so much, but never mind. It still looks okay. Let's have a look at 13b. 13b has given me some verse in true Bardian form. Okay, that's definitely a lot more like the style of Shakespeare. I'll let you sing that out loud if you want to, but that looks like a much better version of the song. How has Chat GPT done? Okay, that's also done pretty well. It's just given us the verse, the chorus, verse two, and the chorus. Again, the choruses are the same by the looks of things. That looks okay. It's pretty Shakespearean in style. And Bard, where is Bard's song? There it is. Again, doesn't seem to be particularly in the style of Shakespeare like the other ones are with ye olde language, but it's still okay. Obviously, I think Chat GPT might have done quite well there, but 13B, it's not bad, not bad. And of course, for the final thing, you can just have a chat with it as well. So here, I'm just looking for a chat, lovely weather we're having. Now, one of the benefits of 7B Groovy is that I can run it certainly in 16-bit mode, which is very fast indeed. And of course, you can use it for commercial stuff as well. If you want to carry on chatting, you can do there. I'm saying I need to buy some food. And what does 7B Groovy say? Ah, oh, yes, there's a great market just down the road. You might want to check it out before heading over to the store. So you can just chat. It's, it's good at chatting. I've tested the chatting quite a bit. This one is, is pretty strange. It's carrying on, of course with the Shakespearean uh, thing it's got in here. Indeed, it is quite lovely out today. What brings ye here, fair maiden? <gasps> Did it just assume my gender? Goodness me. All right, let's have a look at ChatGPT. ChatGPT says no. As an AI language model, I would just like to say as an AI language model, a lot. A lot. So let's ignore that. And Bard, Bard says it is indeed. So that's one of the things that you'll find with this one. The 7B Groovy is in their training data. They've taken out all those as an AI language model things that you really don't want to see. So that's one benefit of these models is that it won't say that as much. Are they any good? Well, I'll leave that up to you. Obviously, you can download and Try these at home for yourself. Unlike ChatGPT and Bard, you can run these locally. 7B Groovy is good to go for commercial use as well. So that is one of the main benefits of that. It's small and you can use it commercially. If for any reason you're having problems installing this web interface, then I would certainly check out the manual installation method as I describe in this video.